Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Pivot Artist Interview. Um, today we're talking with Diné artist Keith Smith, and we're very excited to um, talk through his experience as part of Pivot and uh, his artistic journey. Hello. So I'm just going to jump straight into questions. Um, thanks for joining us today also, but um, how did you first join the Pivot Show? Um, it started with the, the one in Flagstaff, the, the tattoo shop. Mm. I believe I was talking to the late um, Buddy Whitethorn Jr. Mm -hmm. He was talking about doing work shows with skateboards. So I was kind of um, interested. I just wanted to attend the first time. I just wanted to you know, just go to see it and all that. So he told me to get a hold of, um, I think it was Dwayne. So I called up Dwayne and said, hey, when's this um, show coming on? Because I wanted to come and check it out and see all the different artists who are participating in the um, art show in the skateboard. <clears throat> so he told me a date and all that. And then he finally said, hey, why don't you um, join and um, participate with us? So I said, okay. So see, I've never done the, the skateboard type shows. Mm -hmm. So me, I, I work at the boarding school here in Chuba City. So I had to kind of scramble to find skateboards. And at the time I didn't know where to get any boards and all that stuff. I asked a lot of my coworkers um, here and there. a lot of them had kids and all that kind of stuff. And so I asked them, do you have any old skateboards that you don't, uh, they don't want? And even, it doesn't have to be brand new, it could be broken ones and all that. So a couple of my friends, they you know, gave me some of the old skateboards and I just re-sanded them, stripped them and I went from there. Then, um, Dwayne kind of told me where I could um, order some boards. So I went on um, Amazon and ordered some um, brand new boards from there. And then, from there you know. So it was, it was interesting. It was a nice show. I was um, surprised and what everybody was doing. And I had and I kind of had to look at other art, art skate, um, artwork and skateboards mm -hmm. to kind of get inspired from it because it was so different for me. I'm more of a traditional type, you might say traditional type artist where I just paint on canvases. So it was it was new for me. And a lot of um, these artists that were there are much, kind of younger than I am. You kind of made me the older than I did. So it was it was interesting, it was neat. I really enjoyed it. And um, working with Landis and Dwayne and um, Buddy at the time and some of the other different artists and just looking at their work was just, wow, it was just amazing, it was just awesome. And from there, it you know took off to the museum in um, in, in it, uh, Northern Arizona, mm -hmm. and then from there it took off to Diné College, and then now here at the, in Colorado, which is uh, it's, it's really I like how the direction that Dwayne and uh, Land has been going with it too. Yeah. And then as a follow-up, we've been asking everyone, what does pivot mean to you? You know, Dwayne and Landis have their explanation, but we're kind of liking to hear what everybody else has to say to you. Well, what pivot means to me, like I said before, it was, it was something new um, painting on skateboard. Um, I, I done paint, paintings on other material, but for the skateboard type was, is a different type of, um, how should I say, um subject matter you might say i still i can i tend to use my my traditional type artwork which is i deal mostly with just um the elderly or um native themes of everyday life of um, my, or, um, my elders i never really used any type of traditional symbolism for some reason um, like using baby chase or certain designs certain design just a basic designs i'll use but I never went towards the um, ceremonial type symbolism because I felt that for me, I felt that it was kind of sacred. You know, I wanted to keep that sacred. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to use that to try to profit off of it. So all these sketches at home, yeah, I'll be using, because I used to paint a lot of using Yabby Chase type of stuff and all that. But for me, after a while, I kind of thought about it and thought that maybe it was a little too sacred to use and, and a lot of those images are used for prayers and songs and healing type purposes so for pivot for me it was just a turning point for how i could change my artwork how i could um incorporate 
different types of um, techniques and um, subject matter, you might say. When I was younger, I did play with the skateboard, but it was an almost a skinny type plastic type wheels, and it was just, they just play around here in town with it. Not like what it is today. So it's different. Yeah. So jumping off of that, kind of pivoting, um, how did you first get into art? Uh, I guess it's been with me for for quite a bit. Um, when I was young, I just modeled this doodle and kind of drew here and there. But what really got me into art was my older brother. Um, his name is Jonathan. He used to go to school in um, California. Him and my older sister were on, on a, what they call a placement program. To the LDS church, my mom sent them on. So they would go to, to California to go to school during the school year. So when they came home during um, for the summer, my older brother would um, have a sketchbook and would have different type of magazines like sci fi art magazine, comic books, and so forth. So I would look through his, his sketchbooks and I, just, I was just so in awe with his artwork because I knew he could draw. But when he went to California, um, more, I guess, more classes were offered to him through art. So I used to steal a sketchbook. I used to sit someplace and just look at his sketchbook and look at his sketchbook and try to copy it. And, keep it and, and to this day, I did actually steal one of his sketchbooks and I still have it. <laughs> this was back in the uh, 70s. So he did, I, I don't know if he knows it, but I still have the sketchbook. <laughs> just in, um, doing art and as the years went by when he went back to school he would come back and he would come back with something different um, one year he came back with um, a paint box and that's when my first um, started to paint really and he brought back a painting that he was working on was, uh, one of the old Frederick Remington painting that he was copying it was oil so yeah, and it was this paint box that had oils in it and brushes and so forth. So he goes, and he had these little, small little um, canvas panels, and um, he goes, yeah, try it. So I just tried it, and that time was um, when Star Wars came out, back in 77. So these two canvas panels I painted was a Stormtrooper and a Darth Vader, and I actually still have those paintings I stashed them from this day. But that was my first time doing painting oils and all that. And when he went back to school, years went by and he kept coming back. And then one year he just gave it to me, the box. And by that time I was in um, high school. And back then we didn't have um, no internet, so we couldn't look up on museums or different masters, even back in high school. The, the, the library was kind of scarce some art stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but, the teacher was um, pretty good about it. You know, uh, I took a lot of um, basic um, design classes, basic drawing classes. I took a lot of, all four years in high school, I took art classes. So and that was kind of the foundation of where I went from there. And it was just, just, it was just, it wasn't to a point where I didn't want to make money. It was just something I enjoyed. I enjoyed art. I just enjoyed drawing. I just enjoyed putting pen to paper, or pencil to paper, or whatever. And once I got out of high school, that's when I decided to try college and see what I can go from there. So then it took off from there. <laughs> well, you were doing Star Wars well ahead of uh, the curve, I guess, then. Uh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, it sounds like it was a lot of your childhood was in, you spent a lot of time being interested in art. Um, right mm -hmm. now we're in kind of difficult times and we have difficult things happening. Um, what does art mean for you and what do you think art means in general in these kinds of times? Um, what art means to me, I guess it's more or less it's a healing process or it's a way keeps me grounded or in our term we, we sometimes say or balance um it keeps me home with my family um i do my art 
not just for me, but for my family as well. Um, it keeps me grounded. It keeps me sane. Um, my son right now is in the Navy and is stationed overseas, my oldest boy. And with the world as crazy as the state is now, um, art kind of keeps me from thinking bad things about what's going to happen or something. It keeps my anxiety in check. Um, it keeps me, um, like I said, it keeps me in a hojo state. Um, uh, that's how art is for me. It keeps me grounded. It keeps me, in, keeps me sane, I should say. In art, for other people, I guess it, sh it also is a healing process. Some people use art to... Um, get after anger. Um, some use it as political um, use. Um, some use it just to, like for me, just to, for a healing process. Um, I'm not very much, I'm not very political. I, mean, I don't use my art as political type um, situations. And I, I mean, the world right now is crazy enough as it is. Um, Sometimes we need to create art to bring um, stability to certain people who are feeling bad, who are feeling sad. And this is a way, if I, if I can create a certain painting, um, that bring them happiness, that bring them to this, um, that maybe, especially if we're here in, uh, in the Navajo um, the nation where we've lost a lot of our elders. And a lot of my subject um, I right now is I deal, I paint a lot of my elders. My, my grandparents were very good um, um, people that I respect mostly. And so I paint a lot of these things that reminds of the subject matter is just basic things that have or what life was before. It was simple, it was just simple things and, and it brought, it brings, some people it says it brings happiness to them because there's some things that they've seen and they remember of their grandparents. So that's how I use my art. And uh, I try not to use much of, um, like I said before, I try not to use much of a ceremonial type of things because I want to keep that sacred. Now. So mine is mostly just dealt with um, the, the native people or native elders and how life was for them. Um, it's just simple, simple things in life. It makes sometimes it makes people happy to see that. Yeah, kind of building off of some of the things you said. Um, our next question is what does it mean to be a Native artist, or what does being a Native artist mean to you? Well, uh, to be a Native artist, hmm. I guess, is to show the beauty of our culture, the beauty of our heritage, um, to show them that we are resilient as a Native people, um, that no matter how things are going on in this world, that we still are here, I guess you should say. Um, I guess to be hojo, I guess, to, to, to be in balance with yourself and around you and with other people. Um, that's how I feel as a Native artist, you know, just to stay in balance with nature and, and yourself mostly is to is not just to love yourself that's how that feels art and if you want to succeed in, i mean not just money wise i don't um because yeah it's nice to sell a nice painting and get some money but just to to create a painting and once you're done with the painting step away and look at it and feel and you feel um good about yourself and maybe it'll make somebody else feel it's good as well so that's how i feel like as being a native artist is. Well, this is our last question, and it does kind of build off of your answer there. Um, Amy and I both agree that your paintings of the elders are some of the most beautiful paintings. Like, and it's so interesting to see them on the juxtaposition there on the skateboard deck, and it's this really traditional style, and mm -hmm. these elders, and they're just gorgeous. Um, but in the show, we noticed that there's some variety, like you tried out some other styles. And, and so I was just curious about your, your different styles, your different approaches to your different decks. I guess that's sort of like what like the pivot part of it is. Mm -hmm. um, is I'm trying to, mm, to move away from my traditional 
style, you might say, and for something new direction. And for now, like being in quarantine, um, it gives me that chance to try something new. And you always want you always want to do something new. And I'm not very everything I do mostly is realism, I say, mm-hmm. and to do with the, uh, um, abstract is something really new for me. I never really at a younger age, even in college, I never liked abstract art for some reason. Um, I took a, a couple of art history classes, and at the time, before I met my wife, we, I guess we talked later on, we both took an art class together, an art history class together. And I used to just always sit in the back, and sit in the back and look, look at the um, slides that they were presented and talk about certain abstract art, or modern art, and so forth. I, I never really, for some reason, I wasn't really drawn to modern art. But it's an object, right? So I sit in the back, and at times I tend to take a nap and fall asleep. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, but then later on in life, when I sit, start seeing um, other people's artwork, um, like going to different art shows and seeing people like Antoinette, especially Antoinette's a good friend of mine, and seeing her artwork and how they create um, their type of art, abstract artwork. And, just listening to them, how they, how they describe it and so forth, and what comes up in their mind and their heart put into that piece of art. It changed me later on. So I, you know, from then, that's when I started trying different approaches to my art. I tried different, using different materials, different techniques, and, and seeing how I can create something that will still bring balance into me and to whatever, to maybe to other people. So that's so that's how I I guess go about my work. <laughs> I guess it's different. I just want to try something new. I never want to stay in one area. I just want to kind of continue to try different other techniques, different other materials, different other styles, and so forth. Well, you succeeded there. It's very cool to see the diversity of your work in that show, and so I'm excited that. We should be able to share that with people here soon and they'll get to check it out. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thanks for chatting with us today. Um, so thanks to Keith. Thanks to everyone watching this. Um, you can yeah, follow Keith. Oh, go ahead. I was really hoping that the show is uh, open up in um, uh, the museum there because my daughter actually goes to school there. Um, oh, no way. I, yeah, she's a freshman last year and I told her about it. Yeah, I go, I, I'm going to be in the um, pivot show there and she was all excited she wanted to go check it out and all this happens <laughs> we're planning to can. we're planning to open and try to do by appointment and actually get people in the gallery because it looks gorgeous so hopefully she can get in there and check out your work on campus that's cool <laughs> yeah and we're excited to see how you know the fort lewis college students react and you know feel about a lot of these you know, works because they're all so different. We have, you know, your style with a lot of the realism and then like Antoinette's with a lot of the abstract, but there's a lot of like emotion that you can really feel from it. So I know that I really want students to be able to see it and I know that they do too. So hopefully, (laughs) hopefully we can make it happen. I like to see where, I like to see where it goes from after this. Yeah. Because I talked to Duane about it and and see, and see. What, what else can you do? Where else, where else can this go? And things up in the air, and I'm really excited. Hopefully, it goes farther overseas or New York, like you said before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah and we definitely see its that. potential. Yeah. 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 Well, let me say too that people should really check out your Instagram page. They can find you at Keith Smith underscore Art to see more of your amazing works. I mentioned this to you earlier, but I think people will really love it because you get to see a lot of the behind the scenes, see you actually working on pieces, see the process, and that's really exciting. Um, for people watching, if you don't already follow the Pivot Exhibit Instagram page, you can follow them at pivot underscore skateboard underscore deck underscore exhibit. Um, and then follow us at the center at Center SW Studies FLC. We're also on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we also want to thank some of the people who helped support us financially to bring Pivot to the center at Fort Lewis College, um, like the LPEA people and our crowdfunding donors. So 
yeah, thanks for chatting with us today. We really hope to be able to see you, your daughter, everyone in the fall and see where this goes. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.